we often have quantities that are changing over time and specifically growing. And we'd like to be able to model those quantities with some type of a uh, mathematical formula if we can. So here's an example. Marco is a collector of antique soda bottles. His collection currently contains 437 bottles. Every year, he budgets enough money to buy 32 new bottles. Can we determine how many bottles he will have in five years and how long it will take for his collection to reach 1,000 bottles? So just looking at this information, it, it seems like, yes, we should be able to figure out um, how much he'll have and how long it will take to reach 1,000 bottles. The question is, how do we write that model mathematically? And uh, this takes us into our first type of model, uh, which is a linear growth model. A linear growth model is where you have a quantity that is growing by the same amount uh, over the same uh, time period. So we have a quantity that starts at size p naught and grows by d every time period, whether that's every month, year, etc. Then we can get the quantity after n time periods by using these two formulas. So these are our two linear growth models. First of all, we have a recursive form. The recursive form is a formula that tells us how much we have after n time periods if we know how much we have uh, the time period before that. So for example, if I know that, uh, if I look at, think of my last example where Marco was collecting antique soda bottles, he was getting 32 new bottles every year. That means that if I use this formula, if I know how much he has one year, then to get the next year, I just simply need to add 32 to that. Instead of the recursive formula, we can use an explicit form. That's where we just use the initial amount, and then we can find out how much we have after n time periods by just taking that constant difference d, which was 32 in the case of Marco, and multiply by the number of time periods. So these are the two forms that we should be familiar with, the explicit, uh, sorry, the explicit form here and the recursive form here. Let's go ahead and do an example. The population of elk in a national forest was measured to be 12,000 in the year 2003 and was measured again to be 15,000 in 2007. If the population continues to grow linearly at this rate, what will the elk population be in 2014? So we've got a couple things going on here. I'm going to go ahead and use our initial, our, our explicit form, where, which is p sub n equals uh, p naught, the initial amount, plus d times the uh, number of time periods n. Using this formula, we can plug in the information that we have. So first of all, this 12,000 in the year 2003. I'm, first of all, I'm going to measure um, p naught. I'm just going to let that be uh, in the year 2000, just because I want to kind of it to make uh, uh, be kind of easy numbers to work with. All right. So I'm going to let n uh, n equals zero be the year 2000. Okay. So 12,000 in the year 2003. That would be I have 12,000 equals e naught plus d times n, and in 2003, n will now be 3, because that's 3 years after the year 2000. I also have 15,000 in the year 2007. So I can plug that in here, 15,000 equals p naught plus d times, and then in the year 2007, that would be in year 7. So now I have this system of equations, and I can use this to solve for both my p naught and my d. If I go ahead and take this first and just solve for p naught, I get p naught equals 12,000 minus 3 times d. I can now take this value for p naught, and I can plug it in right here. So that gives me 15,000 equals 12,000 minus 3d plus 7d. Well, I can subtract 12,000 from both sides, and I get 3,000 equals 4d. Dividing both sides by 4, 
I get 750 equals D. Now that I know D, I can take that and plug it back in up here to get P naught. P naught equals 12,000 minus 3 times 750. Now I can simplify. 3 times 750 is 2,250. Subtracting those, we get 9,750. Now that I have P naught, I can go back and get my explicit formula, P sub n equals P naught, which is 9,750, plus D, which is 750, times n. This explicit formula I can now use to find the elk population in 2014. If n equals 0 is 2000, then 2014 is n equals 14. So p sub 14 is 9750 plus 750 times 14. We plug this into our calculator. We get 20,200. And that's our estimate for the elk population in 2014, following the linear model.